met with Drew, and he said, it's really different from everything you've done before. Read the script. Take a look. Let me know. And I remember sitting down to read the script for the first time and not being able to put it down because it was just so different from anything else I'd ever been involved with and so different from what I was expecting from Drew. And there was something so beautiful and haunting about it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is uh, this is really, really, really exciting. And I called Drew a couple hours after he sent me the script, and I said, all right, we should, we should probably start. I think Drew's done such a great job of crafting something that doesn't really feel like other movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's what makes it really fun. You know, I think we're living in an era where movies are starting to feel more and more similar to each other, and we just kind of having a lot of movies that are similar coming out one after the other, and to have something that's really, really unique and really different, I think is going to be a really nice thing to have in the theater. I think the thing that Drew is that Drew does really well is he infuses this real life to these characters and gives them a real sense of heart. And I think that makes it really, really exciting. I think that's kind of my favorite part about working with Drew is the, is the heart that kind of comes with it. Martin uh, was someone that uh, that I'd never met before, but his his ability to understand what Drew was after was really profound. And as we started designing the hotel, that process from the carpet, which was all custom-made carpet, to kind of capture these period patterns that existed, but in colors and shades and tones that they had not actually been made in. And the wallpapers were all custom to the, to the movie. And I mean, even the bedspreads, every detail of that hotel was custom, was custom designed, but everything felt so lived in and so real. And I think when people watch the film and they see that hotel for the first time, I think it really takes them somewhere cool. Mm-hmm. And you really feel like you're in a, in a place you've never been before. I love when a director comes in with a document just laying out how color is going to work in the film. Because so much of the palette of a movie can tell you things about character, about the emotions that you're supposed to feel in the film, about the way the movie's going to unfold. And I think the way Drew approached color was so robust and so specific that it made, it really made the movie come to life right away for everybody. John Hamm was a really exciting choice as an actor for the film. Um, he joined the process really late, and he brought so much energy and so much life and so much excitement and enthusiasm to the role. And I really cannot imagine anyone else in the part because he's got the look of the FBI guy. He feels like the FBI guy, but he plays that southern schmucky vacuum cleaner salesman so well with such great, great enthusiasm for his accoutrement that you just can't help but love him. Darlene is the character who is moral throughout. She doesn't compromise, she doesn't bend, she doesn't do the wrong thing on occasion. And as you watch the rest of the movie, everyone kind of makes compromise, everyone else kind of makes compromises, everyone kind of makes gray decisions, everyone kind of makes morally challenging decisions, and Darlene just stays on the straight and narrow the whole time. He's trying to change. He's a man who's done poor, who's done bad, who's done ill, but who always wanted to do the right thing, and he's trying to find out how to do that. Dakota's character, Emily, is a tough is a tough person, and she is doing what's right for her sister. She's not necessarily going about it the right way, and you kind of see what happens as a result to her um, because she's making compromised decisions, but the things she's doing are brave, and she's trying to protect her sister, and she's trying to remove her sister from a bad situation, and you realize she's been protecting Rose since they were children, you know, and she's not gonna let anything come between her and her sister. If you look at her singing in the big one when Laramie's going through the hallway, I think we did that 27 times, and she performed that whole thing 27 times all the way through without even flinching, and it was unbelievable to watch, and her voice lasted the whole time, and she She has such a control over her voice, over the instrument that is her voice, and she just really killed it. To have such a big musical component in the film was something I was super psyched about, because it's just something great about that vibe. 